Okay. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? Yeah. It's it's hectic, busy, but you know, it's the world we're in right now. I can't imagine what your life is like. Me neither. I try to forget about it right now. <laughs> it's funny, eh? Like you, 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 you young, well, just when you're young, you imagine that one day your life is going to be such and such, and you're going to have this and this, and you're going to be this and this, and all of a sudden you get older and older, and you realize, well, how did I get into where I am? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, true thought, hey, true thought. Oh well. So did, did you decide on your uh, decide on your five, the center point? Oh yeah, I gotta get that book. Just hang on, it's my other bag. way too many books clearly there we go i'm really just down to two i still don't have a prime one maybe that's something we can figure out together yeah so we, what i you had writing production show choreography coaching teaching public speaking spiritual kind of thing yeah and then, yeah, so I, I kind of brought it down to two, which I thought would be more on the public speaking or coaching teaching. I kind of, they're sort of the same in some ways. Well, not really. <laughs> if I'm being a Malcolm X, that's different for me coaching people on the side. Yeah. I guess I see them a bit intertwined by the way that I work, but maybe that's something I need to sort well, through. How do you work? Like, what are you on your pulpit? Again, you're looking at sort of like the, the ideal of going, if I could do anything, if I could be anything, if I, you know, how do I really want to structure it? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I think being, you know, being a coach, it's very different from being a public speaker. I mean, being a public speaker can sort of create the events where people can then come to you to get coaching. Um, I mean, there's this obvious link there, but to be a real public speaker, if that's like, you want to be like a Tony Robbins type, if you want to, or you want to be somebody who's, who's, who's top five in Canada, women speakers kind of thing. Yeah, that's, that's quite different from, I'm going to talk to my entire school when I have to. Kind of yeah. Thing. Or, you know, if you want to get political and then start getting on your pulpit and <laughs> get political, say, okay, I've had enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. I feel a little bit, a little bit torn there, honestly. Well, where is your comfort zone? Kind of in both. Like, I mean, have I done lots of big, big, big public speaking events? A few hundred people for sure. Could I see myself doing that? Yeah. But then there's the element of coaching and teaching, which I have done and continue to do. And there's more to do that too. Like, I mean, your, your impact is 
more personal on the coaching and teaching, which is, you know, what I really like. Um, from the public speaking part, it can funnel, you know, if you, if you have a good following public speaking, then it can follow into the coaching and teaching too. So I guess that's what I maybe meant by the connection piece. Well, and so are you wondering if they're the same category or wondering if they're separate categories? That's the sort of big, big thing for you? A little bit, yeah. And which one I feel more, Close you know, what would be my prime focus? Because that, like you say, that would change what I'm doing a little bit. Well, I, I think, you know, there's a big, like for me, I know I got to do public speaking at some point and I, I do my videos, but it, it isn't exactly to a, a real audience. <laughs> so right. for me to be in front of, let's say 500 people or a thousand people or even 200 or even hundred and speak about, you know, I've never done, I've never shown my work to the world in a sense. I've never done that. And at some point I figure I have to, and when I do do that, then it's like, okay, that's going to change my life. Now cats out of the bag or here it is. It's either going to be, wow, that's really good. Or, you know, who cares, man, <laughs> go home. <laughs> Could be a bit of both. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I think at some point I got so much stuff personally that, you know, it's, it's like, you know, and, and, and for you, it's, it's, you have to value your own knowledge. You have to value, what did you learn that nobody knows? You know, what, what do you have that the world needs to learn and to stand in that value mm -hmm. and, and think about, you know, who are you really, you know, what's your legacy going to be? What do you really want to create? Like how big you want to get or how, like, how concise do you want to be? Like, where's your high value outputs and how, you want to put that into a container and then how are you linking that to the visionary hub and what are the what kind of you know there's what i see is there's you know create the new paradigm let's say each of us has a piece of the puzzle mm -hmm. so i think the piece i'm bringing is a structure to tie all the pieces together but each person has to sort of figure out okay well where's my position who who what really am I looking to light up or transform or, or have the impact on? And where's the best leverage? Where do I situate myself in a sense of being the person that people come to to solve which problem? You could be like, if you're a coach for principals, I mean, you know, I would think that that would help a lot of principals out. They probably just don't have that type of high-end coaching that can, you know, in one hour change, change their life. Mm -hmm. um, or give them a tool that they can then use, right? I mean, or you go, well, no, principals don't do it for me. It's the kids or it's the teenagers or it's the teachers or it's the administrators or like it's, I think these days it's kind of like taking, you know, here's my niche knowledge and here's my niche customer. And when I bring my niche knowledge to that customer, that's where the big whammy is. It's just like there's massive leverage. I mean, for me, when I'm speaking with you, I'm going, wow, principal, you know, for me, that that's a higher leverage relationship that I've had with other people who, let's say, are just independent contractors. Right. You know, who aren't in a position of authority. And, and it's kind of like, because I've been a sort of anti-authority guy, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like the guy gets kicked out of school, comes around, comes with some system to help principal deal with people like him kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah. And maybe like, I don't know, I was just doing some work on, on Friday about like, I have my own business carry authentically you, and then I have the hub. So right now I've been focusing so much on putting energy into the hub, which I still want to continue to do, but I sort of had a little bit of a aha moment where maybe the carry authentically you has to also build so that it can funnel more into the hub and the hub becomes more valuable in that sense. Um, so why I'm saying this out loud is I'm thinking now maybe the coaching and teaching part becomes my hub focus, like the, what we've talked about, the designer, blah, blah, blah. But maybe the carry authentically you is my public speaking. And then, I mean, eventually they mesh anyways, but maybe that's how I 
distinguish a little bit between the two so that they're both building. Yeah. Does that, does that make sense kind of? Yeah, I mean, it, I think that everyone needs their own autonomy and ability to be their own kind of contractor, their own business, because then you can keep kind of like making the decisions around what you want to do. Your ideal job is basically you are creating your schedule, you are creating your relationships and you're balancing those things, right? So the Visionary exactly. Hub, you know, is kind of like the idea of the shared knowledge community is at some point that the the larger infrastructure and marketing is available to everybody. And that in the beginning, everyone should be helping everyone out to make their dollar per hour or to make their, like if you go, like the ideal job starts with you creating what you want with your time and you schedule that in and then you look at, okay, visionary hub, what am I doing with the group? What am I doing like with the team? Then looking at the community level and go, okay, what am I doing in terms of the, the community space? Mm -hmm. So it's like looking at each of these spaces, the personal space, the one-on-one -on -one space, group space and community space, and look at your schedule in terms of these spaces. And yeah. look, at the, look at these spaces in terms of you designing, uh, again, at the ideal, if you go, okay, well, I want to do one community space, I'm the speaker, once a month in a physical location, let's say. Yeah. And go, okay, that's in my lunar cycle, that's a recurring thing that I want to have. And then yeah. you might go, I'm doing 10 coaching sessions every two weeks, you know, two hours each with high end principles, let's just say. Yeah. And then I've got like my weekly meeting with the hub. And then I'm doing, let's say, uh, so you're doing two synergizers with the principals sitting down at the synergizer table. So you bring some masterminds together. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, when you're thinking about your design, you're not thinking them kind of like as independence. You're thinking, okay, these are pieces of the puzzle. Some pieces are, are just my pieces, and some are the teams, and some are the communities. And then, how yeah. do I distinguish where I'm making my money in each one of these? Uh, and and that's where the service conversation, right? Do you have the do you have the map? I gave you last time, right? The map that had the family, the service, the business, the friendship, the intimate, and the social conversations? Yes. Okay. So I don't know if you printed that out, but every map I send you, you should print out at some point. Okay. And so it's referring to like that map. It's kind of like if I refer you to that map, then it's like the beginning of, of thinking in bigger chunks and looking at like where boundaries are that business around service you might be doing community service you're not getting paid you're doing one of those a month right you might be asked to do 10 of them but you do one of them or you do one every three months right because you've got you know writing production show and choreography and that to me is like these are all massive things if you want to bring your own production into being or you want to do someone else's production or these are parts that you want to you know dance show you know every three months or uh you know some sort of artistic production mm -hmm. i don't know how much you want to do that but if you really bring in these other aspects that you have written down here what kind of writing do you want to do i want to write a book i don't know what the book is yet but fiction or nonfiction? Non. I mean, it'd be something with self self development, uh, my story. I don't know, something like that. I kind of have pondered that for a while. How about a critique of the public school system and then showing the solutions? Sure didn't think of that one. <laughs> Is that a good one? They may never want to speak to me again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got to be careful which which bridges you burn. Yeah. Um, and then. Wow. Oh, it could be. So how do you, do you have a pretty extensive file folder system on your computer? 
like if it's organized i'm gonna say no <laughs> how do you or like online in your documents what are your what are your file folder categories like how do you organize your your file folders <laughs> <laughs> or do you just have a whole bunch of file folders that are just anything that comes up gets a file? Yeah, kind of? I mean, I I put them in major groupings and then subgroups in them. But I mean, lots of times there's just a lot of files and they go in a folder. So what are your major groupings? Like uh, for work wise or like for work wise? Well, it, it'll depend. I mean, there's obviously stuff on budget and there's stuff on meetings and there's stuff on um, professional development, you know, speeches, assemblies, like whatever I need to do to function, basically. Could you could you give me a list of your file folders? Right now? <laughs> or how email them to you. How many, yeah, you can, how many file, file folders you got? I have a lot. Yeah. Could you, how long would it take you just to, to draw, draw, write me a list? I could probably screenshot it and then you could at least see the major categories. Screenshot, yeah. Yeah, I could do that. Because we've got to figure out how to inflow matrix you. <laughs> so can you give me any feedback in terms of the tools or the thinking? Kind of like what have you learned so far kind of thing honestly i think it's it's a lot of you need time with these things to really process like i think all of the tools there's merit to every part of my life to use them what i need to do now is actually look at them and spend the time using them in different ways right so and to organize them so I know, okay, well, with this session, this is the way I want to go. This map will work for this. Like, I'm not quite there yet. And that's, sure. that's kind of where I think that'll be helpful to me. So then when it's working with a client or it's working with a group or I'll, I'll have more familiarity about, okay, now this is the one that I'm going to use or here's three or four to choose from, right? Like, it's a lot coming at me really quickly. Right. And you know, and, and in and amongst with everything else. If this was all I was doing, no problem. I would have time to process, you know, those maps and, and really use utilize them right away. But right now it's just constant. And I don't mean this from you. I just mean everywhere right now in the world is coming at you, particularly right. me right now. So then it's like, well, I, and I'm a person that I'd like to try it a few times and then immediately I'll know how to use it but I feel like I'm just at a bit of a standstill because there's just lots coming all at once, right? And, and even with the hub, there's lots of things that we need to organize. Like I like to have my lists of here's what's happening first, second, third, but we're not there yet. So right now everything's feeling, it's out there, but it's not right. there yet, right. you know? And that's just, that's just Yeah, crazy. I mean, Part of the pro part of the process um yeah and i think like just personally too like even just talking to my daughter on the weekend she's like mom like you guys need to figure out how much time you're committing to the hub and how much time you actually need to be together because that's also part of it right it's like oh okay now we're meeting on thursday oh now we're doing this oh now we're doing this which we need to do but at the same time i'm a person that functions like here's what i need to design I'll work on my timeline and I'll give you the end product. I might ask for some input in between, but otherwise I don't want to waste my time just talking. Yeah, for sure. But I know we need that too. So I think everything just needs to be compartmentalized a little bit for me and a little bit more structured. And then I think we'll have more leverage out in the world. For sure. And you're yeah. in a very different situation with your job and being a principal. So, and you're, I think leverage perfectly in the right position. And Lori and I were talking about that this morning of, you know, to do the big changes, you know, every person is playing a big role in a much different way. And, yeah. just, and you're not, can't physically be there. You're not going to be there as much. So people have to look at it very differently, right? In terms of what can be contributed at what time right now. And I think that again, that having that design, as you as a designer, designer's right, need time to go away. You're more in the personal space. 
they're doing their own thing, right? So the others yeah. are more in the group space at the visionary hub at, at the, the space space, which obviously is going to have a much, you know, closer to the client going through the experiences. You know, it's different. Yeah. And I mean, eventually I want to be there more for that personal stuff too, but I kind of see where that can also, like, again, I, I, it needs to be streamlined and structured so that it's something you can, you know, and again, we're meeting, they're meeting during the day. Well, who, everybody works. Nobody can meet during the day unless you're retired or you don't have to work. Right. So if we're going to leverage more people, we're also going to have to look at how that structure works because for most people that doesn't work, you're going to have the same three people showing up every week that are just friends. Yeah. What, what good is that now? Yeah. You know, and, and again, that dynamic is important and those people are important. I don't mean no disvalue there. It's just that if you, we want more people and more clients and we want to start having our groups, we have to be accessible to them. Right. And also, you know, that, that isn't taking into account, let's say the, um, let's say online access and, and having a lot of customers maybe coming in and on online at some point yeah. right, during the day, but yeah. it's computer time, right? So it's, it's because yeah. of COVID you have to adapt <coughs> to yeah. the situation, yeah. right? And I think too, it's, it's, it's like, as I said, just kind of designing and I, and I, yeah, like, you know, we talked on was it Friday night, the three of us about, okay, well, we're going to do a kids, kids summer program for a week. Okay. And so I just said, look, don't waste my time right now talking to me about the details because what we need is the design first. Yeah. Then I can map out, I can put a program together in an hour, no problem. Right. But now I don't want to talk about it with you guys anymore. I right. need to go do my work. So I think that's part of it where I feel a little bit like sludged down because I spend four hours a week talking and it's like, no, I got to get the actual work done. Right. So, you know, and again, value in the talking value in the process value in the planning but i think we have to get to a point where we each know what our you know what our role is and that we all don't have to be together all the time to make headway right and and i think again like the the three of them are going to be they've got more time and they're going through a different type of process than you are yeah. sort of to recognize that and to understand that from both your points of view and um again Lori and i were talking about that earlier just yeah you know because that's just the, the situation you're in and the one hand is perfect and on the other hand is is like you're not in the same situation so you can't can't expect the same time um availability yeah exactly and, and i think you know each person we i think we're more clear now on what each person is bringing and and that now it's just to figure out the how and maybe to learn to um, have a more of a weekly, monthly plan or a lunar plan, and then now give it to me. Let's stick with it. Let's not be squirrels because I don't like that. We can't just be going all over. Then we don't get anything done. Yeah. And then it's hard to see. Okay, what well, what's my return of investment? Well, there isn't any right now. And and I don't mean like not return of investment. I'm learning lots. We've got lots of things that we're creating. I know this will take time, but I don't want to put in four hours of talking. I want to put in one hour of talking, a plan, and then two hours of design, and I'll have you your program next week. Hmm. You know? Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, that's the reality. They, they're they living in a very flexible, maybe not so much Christy. She's got a lot on her plate, too. But Lori and Sylvia have a more flexible life right now. And I'm the most compartmentalized out of all four. Yeah. So my time is very valuable and I'll give 125%, but I want to be focused and then I will do it. And then I don't need a whole lot of. <laughs> do, do you think they understand that? No, Okay. I don't think so. I mean, we haven't really as a group sat down, which we're going to do at the end of May, you know, we're going to sit down and spend time together as the four of us because right now it's a lot of piecemealing, right? I was, I started in September with them coming out every month, doing the workshop with Dare to Be You. And then, you know, it was the constant while well, we're doing the business and no, we're not. And then, then it turned into the visionary hub from the learning center. Then there was Kaylee was involved and then she's not. And now it's the four of us. So really in a year we have 
done a lot. There's right. been a lot of changes, but we haven't really had the four of us come together to synergize how that's going to look. And, and, and I know it will ebb and flow. It has to. That's how you grow. But there, I think, has to be a bit of an understanding of how each one of us works and what our roles are to propel us. Because I feel like we get bogged down in, I call it squirrel brain. And I have squirrel brain too. We all do, especially when we're creative. But it's kind of like, yeah, stick to the plan and, and keep leveraging that. And then look at how we can get more clientele and people by being more accessible, but it doesn't mean we need all four of us to be accessible at the same time. Right. <clears throat> right. That's how I see it. But I mean, again, well, I think we do, we do need that time together to figure that out. And then, you know, recognizing the value of what each person is doing. So um, I can't, you know, Sylvia's example might be she's doing a lot of emails and those kinds of things might take her an hour, but she doesn't need all of us there to do that hour. No. You know, but right now I feel like some of that, I honestly could do it all by myself. And then I wouldn't have to deal with, Kaylee, did you get this out? Sylvia, are the emails done? Can I see the spreadsheet of what the month is going to look like? Right. We don't have that yet. We're just, eh. right. And that's for me, what I need to see from, for the business side of it is like, okay, here we are. Here's our monthly plan. This is what we're doing. And then each one of us has to be able to, you know, trust the other person to just get it done. But right now it's constant follow-up. And then we all need to be involved in my opinion, but then sometimes it's almost like too much involved. Like I trust Lori 110% to go do her connect thing, go do it. But the other pieces, right? I haven't designed a lot. I've only designed with Lori. So when I say to them, I'll have your, your program, well, then I don't need you for three hours. I'll go do it myself. And then right. I'll show it to you. And then we'll talk about what changes. Like Christy had, and Sylvia had awesome ideas. Then I could quickly, five minutes, I knew exactly what to do. So right. I think that's an important part of how to get our group moving more forward. Yeah. And I, th I think if I can add a piece or, or sort yeah. of like the, the, the elephant in the room of, of having some call the inflow matrix or, or wanting or trying to build a shared knowledge community, which is more a vision of mine that you know you either sort of buy in or you don't. And yeah. so the going week by week with a piece at a time, you know, format may or may not be the best way, but is the only way right now that I can see kind of doing it. And that yeah. as you say that each one of these tools <laughs> takes a bit to just one of them could be a, a mate like the value system by itself is a major thing yeah absolutely and i think i know exactly what you're saying because i work in that kind of creative mind too where i'm going to have a plan and we're, i'm going to go off another way based on what comes to me because that's feedback and so then you look at your clients and go okay that's not the direction we're going but we need some kind of a map and then i think we need to go okay so yeah, like it's the values map. Well, there's so much value in using just the values map for a few groups for a while before yeah. we even bring anything else on. Yeah. You know, and then you, we're all more, and there, there may be more, um, they've had more time with it than I have. So I recognize that and I appreciate that. Um, and again, I don't need to be part of all those processes, but I could bring it in a different way. So for sure. And, yeah, and, I, but, and I think that, you know, I guess what I'm trying to add in is, is sort of like more complexity to the complexity and, and a whole new kind of, if you're building a new paradigm structure that hasn't been built before and you're building from an ideal design by itself, that's a, a big thing, right? To, to get any humans to participate in and to buy in and to go through the process of it, right? Which me and Laurie have been doing for over 10 years. And so I, I've seen that, you know, if you, with different groups of people, it just doesn't work they don't have the interest they don't have the interest in self-development they don't have the interest in building something new they're all going to do their own thing right most people are just going to do their thing or what they can kind of conceive of yeah and so you know it's it's uh 
as I get feedback from each of you, and as I'm sort of sharing like this, it's it's kind of like this, this um, learning process to go, okay, well, what's necessary, what's missing, or like what other pieces are there? Because you 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 aren't on your own in a sense, in that everyone I'm working with personally is kind of like at some point going to be allies because you're going to be using the tools. You're kind of looking at the same idea, and and it's sort of like it's something that as it grows, it'll get stronger. But for the pioneers at the beginning, it's it's a lot. It's a, yeah. big, it's a big thing because I think each of you two are sort of visionaries in your own right and creating a place to bring visions into the world is a big thing, right? Like just like, so, so there's a lot of aspects that, that especially for you being the person who doesn't have the time and, and, is, and is constrained by that old paradigm system that in, in some ways, I guess it's gonna be the hardest on you. <laughs> Um, yeah, and, and I think, you know, that's part of the story. And I think that's a valuable part of the story because, you know, I love Lori dearly. She hasn't lived the same life that I've lived and I haven't lived her life. So her flexibility in her business is not something that I've ever lived with, ever. Right. I've lived in school for 42 years, man. Right. I've been in a box. So I think that's part of the story of our team that I can bring to say, listen, I've lived the old paradigm to the nth degree. Mm. And the story that I'm telling you now is that that might not be the best paradigm to live in. So how can we change these systems? What can we do? Well, we've got some tools for that because that, so I can bring that perspective, you know, um, Christy has a more of a business perspective, which I think appeals to a, another lens in our audience right you've got another perspective so does Lori but Lori's also had a freedom business because she was an entrepreneur right so that's a different perspective so we all have them like lots of value to bring so now that's I guess what I mean by like streamlining that and going okay here's now and now here are some tools for each of these groups and yes there will be overlap because we don't want to compartmentalize people anymore but at the start that's how people are comfortable. You know, it's like, oh, well, Lori's going to have some appeal to principles, but maybe not the same. I'm going to have some appeal to entrepreneurs, but maybe not the same. You know? For sure. And then sure. the two or four of us together bring a lot of appeal because we've covered all the dimensions of it, which right. I think is exciting. Yes. You know? Yes. There's massive potential. Like there, there's yeah. Massive. And, and, I, and I feel it too. I think, yeah, it's just... Um, I think it's yeah. like any like any startup, right? At the beginning, because the structures and processes are not in place, you're getting to know each other, you're all coming from a different place, and everyone's at a different point in their life. That until it gels, let's say with the big event, or until it gels with all of a sudden the first big sell or the sale or the contract or the whatever it is, where all of a sudden you're at a higher level of operation because you have to be. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think hopefully at some point in the future. You know, and, and I would hope this September that things are rolling enough. I mean, that's going to be your big decision, right? Whether you continue in that next year in the system or you actually make the jump and, and go outside. So that's that's something that I think you're also looking at this differently because that's your jump point of sort of, you know, do I go through this for another cycle or do I kind of jump over here and, and, and go in? And if I do, then how is it working and how am I going to work within that? Yeah, that's a big. Well, yeah, and I think, um, you know, any good, any good sort of company, it, it takes it takes two years probably before you're really, you know. And right now we don't have the reach of people, so we have to build that. We have to look at what we can offer for free to entice people to even want to work with us, because there are people that want to work with maybe Christy or Sylvia separately, Lori and I together or separately, but that hasn't been established yet. You know, we don't have that following. We've only done that first, those only those first few preliminary things where we're trying, you know, the hub factor and we're trying to do the dare to be you course. And so we've got a lot of irons in the fire mm. and they're all big. Mm. So I, I got a question for you in terms of media production. 
and from your own point of view of media production and, and towards like online learning and towards, you know, as a public speaker, you have a, a medium here that's free that, you know, you can actually start to build your business on your own. I'm just wondering about from a teaching point of view and from you, like what's your philosophy, your ideas, your thoughts, goals, anything in the background, which. It, it, like in what kind of a, a context? Well, I mean, just like I would suggest starting to make some media about this process, about telling the story, about sort of, or even building your own philosophy. Like, like I don't know, have you ever filmed yourself talking about a subject, let's say 10 times, and then you do two minute, 10 two minute videos? Yeah. yeah have you ever just filmed yourself and then watched yourself? Yeah, and then I filmed them a hundred times more because none of them are ever good enough. Right, so you have done it. You've gone through the process. Yeah, yeah, and I know from conversation that I had with myself and then on Friday with another person that I'm working with, that's my stretch area now. Like, that is something that needs to happen so mm. that we can build a following and get out what we're really about you know, what we really do in all those aspects, how that fits, whether it's the hub or the, you know. Yeah. So it, it has to be, and again, that's where I'm talking about the free, like people have to look at us and say, they're giving us all this for free and now I want more and I trust them, I want to follow them, you know. Um, we don't have that yet. Right, so I guess that's why I'm bringing it up in terms of also by being at a distance, you can still like me load videos onto the website, right? Like you can start to build up that sort of free curriculum that is going to be the enticers for all the other stuff. And I was just wondering if you're uh, open to that. Yeah, I'm, I'm open to it. And I know we get a little bit hung up on, excuse me, as a group, because I think we have different philosophies about it. So I'm open to it. I like to have a bit of a plan because that's the production, right? You kind of have to have this, this, and this. And yes, authentically you, I get it. We have to be authentic and real, but you can't look stupid, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, and, and, and why I say that is sometimes I get caught up in the details. I know that about myself, but the details are also important for the message. So that's why I'm like, no, I don't want Kaylee telling me what kind of stuff we're going to do for content because she doesn't know the program. So you have to put out in my, my own belief, what you, what is going to be received, right? You, it's reciprocal and this is a communication method. So I don't want to put out misinformation, if that makes sense. Right. So it's, it's, it's a detail thing. And, and I know it's a stretch for me to let some of that go and just do it do it short and do the two minutes but in working with this person on Friday her and I were talking and she said you know she's done a marketing course and she said you really do need to know what you're putting out on Monday on Tuesday on Wednesday on Thursday and theme it so that people start to get knowing and familiar with it's not really nilly it's on Monday you know and maybe it's an example what I do at school every Monday is mindful Monday so we do a two minute, two minute meditation every Monday with the whole school. Wow. They know that's coming and I don't change it. Right. Right. It's predictable. And then you start to build the trust and the confidence and the message is always clear. It's always about mindfulness, you know, it's whatever. So then Tuesday is something different. So she said from a marketing point of view, she also was stretching me to do this, but she said also have a plan of what each day is going to look like. Yeah. Because then your message to the world they start to go okay the hub is putting out stuff on happiness understanding balance and values mapping or whatever you know so you start to build a predictable pattern so when you offer something people go oh yeah i remember that quote about how that synergizer thing worked or how the old paradigm map worked then they remember and then they want more right. that was her advice to me so <clears throat> did you did you have you guys done the remedy thing that you're going to do daily since <laughs> I was just thinking about I don't think so like I if if they put something out I didn't see it or I totally 
pooch the poop on that. No, but I mean, you're the busiest of everyone. Would you still participate in that if it was daily? Oh yeah. It's fun, right? Like it's. Yeah. Like oh it's yeah. Fun. Yeah, and I think, like as a, as the hub, those are things we need to do. But like I said, it has to have a bit of a structure. Right. Right. Okay. Um... <laughs> stretch me, stretch me. I feel it coming. Well, I, I think that also that that's, that's a bit of in the future too, when you're actually got the content and you're popping it up and you're matching whatever you've scheduled versus getting ready to do that, which to me is, is where, where more you're at, where you just got to get used to content creation and not be as like be inspirational about it you know sort of like i think if you wrote let's say 10 10 subjects of let's say how to improve education mm -hmm. and then uh from a jar you pick it up and then you talk into your phone for two minutes yeah and you just answer you just go okay here's the problem here's what i think is the solution or this is why the problem exists kind of thing and if you did 10 of those that's that's really good content i mean that could be used popped up on the site you know and that just like as a starter just a, a start i mean maybe maybe five but i mean i've just i've sat there and you just sit there and you can pop that out in about an hour yeah and if you do you have a, a, a youtube account well, I do. I never use it for anything. Well, just is your phone because the thing is, it, it's simplicity, right? It, it's getting to the point of and, and non editing. It's like getting used to the first shot works, like just getting into, okay, I'm going to talk about this and boom, here's a start, here's an ending, click. Yeah. The two minutes, start, middle, ending. Like you just, you, you're training yourself, practicing yourself to, to do like a 30 second thing, a one minute thing, a two minute thing, a 10 minute thing on call right you've got the knowledge inside you you know what you want to talk about you just have to again that structure and and to me that's easy to come up with but for some people it may be difficult to come up with so i i mean i can always help with that but i mean if to, to me the leverage points in terms of if you want to change a system first got to be aware of what the problems are in the system that's what you have and just the beginning the start can be 10 two minute things and then once you have that load them up like do it and then send it to the other uh, people on your team and go, what do you think of this? The beginning of getting feedback, the beginning of getting by and the beginning of going, I did this. I did this on my own. I didn't have to talk to you. Now, now you, you, everyone should mimic you. I think what happens is we need to mimic each other, right? And then each of them need to check, you know, come up with a theme, whatever their theme is. And it could be, you know, for Lori, it could be the 10 personality types. Uh, you know, and for Sylvia, it could be 10 steps for mindfulness. And for uh, Christy, it could be, you know, the 10 action steps to get your business going that, you know, it's part of her program. So all of these are, are, are lead-ins into the programs you want to sell later on. And so then you have this 40 videos now on your website that trained you to practice into the, into the you, you, I mean, I, I just think people, they, they take forever to get stuff done when you can actually just get it done quick now. I mean, you just talk on the phone, two minutes, mm -hmm. click, press the button, give it a title, give it a description, it's in YouTube, load it into the website. Like just that's the process of content on the web right now. The phone to YouTube to your website. Now, when they come to the website, there's something there. But until there's something there, it's kind of like the website, which is actually your biggest marketing tool, right? And that's going to be the place where if someone comes, makes a decision, goes, okay, you know, we, we want this program. It's going to yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. So can you go over again? So, um, so I think there's a lot of merit in what you just said there. So let's just say Sylvia is mindful. Christy, you said it's 10 steps. 10 action steps to make your startup or your business project go. Right. Lori. The, the one for each of the personality types, <laughs> like one, a, a, ten, a two minute that sells the nine and then one for each, a download on each of the nine personality types. Yeah, yeah, and Carrie? 
and carry is the 10 action steps to get your your business boosted how to boost your business in times of covid kind of thing come up with 10 10 really smart action steps that and what am i doing and you're doing um 10 problems in education today Yeah, I think what you're, um, I like the idea and I know, I know I sound very compartmentalized, but I, I like the idea of that structure where we would each have a focus. Because there's, I think there's power when there's focus that although it's separate is the same, but when we all try to speak on each other's stuff and that's not our wheelhouse, it sounds, I don't like it. it gives me that feeling of like, no, I'm disconnected from this now because somebody's trying to talk about something they don't know. Yeah. And you can feel that it's not authentic, right? Like, yeah. I can't tell somebody how to run their business. I don't know, I'm just learning that myself. I could give you other strategies, but that's not my wheelhouse. Yeah. And I think what you're saying is very valuable for there to be a process to this. So we do it, we get feedback before we just put stuff out, but it's not aligned with what we're doing. Yeah. And maybe, and maybe that's how I wasn't, I wasn't articulating that well enough at the start, but now that I've talked through, that would be how I think about it. That's where I've been feeling unease because something would come out and we haven't done a lot, but you know, something comes out and then it's like, Ooh, like even in the writing, it's like, no, that's even that comma is now the wrong message. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I guess that, you know, between, you know, you and, and Christy and Kaylee, like there's, there's a, there's going to be some tension because Kaylee's been the go-to marketer and the go-to, you know, get some stuff done for Lori. Right. And, she, and she's been a very big part of that. And now, you know, there's two powerhouses, two more powerhouses in, inside. And that's, you know, as you add more people into any system right now, you start to have all the, uh, navigational movements well and i think that's part of where the sludge has been happening is is because we we aren't moving much forward because we've been coming back to how does kaylee fit in how does this work where you know and then something on paper comes out but it's not in alignment with what we were doing so then it's like okay so here's an idea but where does that fit in so then you're backtracking again. So that was my point about, well, I could just do this myself. For sure. And I, and I think that that's, that's one of the, again, it's probably good that you're in the school and, and have all that other stuff to do because if you were there, you know, because you're, you're used to such a regimented high output, that you're, I mean, you're, you're, you're just in a totally different ballpark, right? In terms of, you know, what you're handling and what you're dealing with and what you're getting through and, and it's kind of like the the rest of the hub has to catch up to you by the time that you're ready to go in there because yeah. you know there's and, just, there's a lot of little infrastructure that has to be built and then there's just getting used to what you're going to build together right so and you'll find out when you go to your week, weekend workshop i mean i think that weekend is going to be paramount for you guys getting on the same page yeah and i think yeah, you know, again, that part has been compartmentalized because Lori and I had a like Lori's the pivot here, right? Like she's the connector to all of this, right? Yeah. And and so her connection to me is different than what it is to Sylvia. And then Christy's brand new to all of us, really. But we've put a high level of trust into her, high level, and right, thank God, because she's gotten us way further than where we were for six months, really. For sure. You know, so I think each person's dynamic with 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 Lori and I call her the a little bit of the you know, it's like the code well she's the she's the hub, but she's also the codependent, right? So okay. she doesn't you know, she doesn't want to hurt my feelings or hurt Christy's feelings or hurt Sylvia's or hurt Kaylee's, but like Christy says, business is business. Right. And, you know, this isn't about people's feelings. This is about we got stuff, we want to change the world, we gotta get rolling here. 
and and I know what you're saying. Like I I I feel that too. Like there the synergy will be there. It just we haven't had the time to sit down and really be just the four of us. Mm. And and you're and I and I appreciate you saying that like uh, yeah i'm very used to that just okay i've got 300 decisions now left for the rest of the day and i'm and i'm not talking to five people about it i'm going with it and i'll tell you later and yet there's a collaborative piece of the group which i do here too so i'm doing all those things every day yeah but then there's only so much time people like i don't have time for two hours of coffee Mm -mm. yeah i don't know we're gonna do this let's do it yeah, and I, I'm in I'm in high awe of you and admiration, and uh, very appreciative to be in this position of uh, of being a coach to someone who's who's at, operating at such a high level. So I well, and I'm I appreciate you. Like I'm learning lots, and I and I know like deep down in my soul, this is going to take off. It may happen slower than I'd like. You know, I'd like it to be ready tomorrow, but there are so many things that we've talked about today. Like there's team dynamics, there's learning the mapping, and we've got all of these things going on and each of us building a little bit of our own platforms and then a hub platform. Like it's a massive undertaking. Yes. And then so, this crazy wizard who keeps on <laughs> bringing it, oh, you need a new, it's not complex enough, I'll, I'll add something else in, so. <laughs> but But that's good, it'll just, you know, It'll, it'll all take a little bit of time to learn how to, which one works where and how and, and which has the most effect with certain people and clients. And they'll also be drawn to us when we get clear on what it is we're doing together. Mm-hmm. I think, but I could be totally wrong. So do we have a commitment then on the, on the, the videos from you? Yeah. Are you, are you willing to do that? And oh yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And as you do them, send them to me. So I, <laughs> I'm, uh, I look forward to them. Okay. Yeah, I can do that for sure. Um, do you think there would be other content that I could do? Like, I also feel a little bit like, I know we have to start somewhere, but in terms of almost general content about the hub or the, you know, I think that, well, that. I mean, I think, I think, uh, I think if each of you did a five minute video that was kind of like, uh, this is who I am. And this is kind of like why I believe in the hub kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I think that would be good to have. And maybe that's something which you can coordinate from where you are, because like the, the idea about the media side of things is you don't have to be in the same city, right? You can just, everything yeah. you can do from a distance. So if you're more the media coordinator, uh, and that's what they, I think, I think you guys need that. I, I think that the media side of this is going to be massive towards what you're doing. And I think that'll bring in your show production and choreography and other design sides of looking at, okay, well, if we're creating a, essentially think of like a web tv show right you're creating a web tv show where you four are the stars yeah and did you did sorry. you see the video that we just posted on the visionary hub yesterday um i don't think so okay well that would be you know speaking of feedback if you would look at that and then give me feedback like i just set up a little mock interview with Lori and I and somebody here at work that I used as our interviewer okay. <laughs> and you know just talking about our dare to be you course um, okay. but if you would give feedback to me on that then that would also help for us for hub things moving forward I think okay and you know whenever you create things like this just send them to me if you can <laughs> I'll watch it after yeah and then you can kind of get a yeah that's great i mean any type of content you want to start getting into you know like this like i, I need to set it up but um creating content is 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 the way to go yeah and i 
the universe is definitely telling me this because this is the second time since Friday oh. that I've been told <laughs> to make videos and get them out there. Well, I mean, a big part of me is trying to read the field in each call is sort of like, what's the next step or what's the missing piece or where, where are you at without, you know, I, I, I know I have a tendency of, okay, well, let's bring in the next tool. It's just like, I haven't even got the last tool yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, you're overwhelmed? Well, let me just add some, like, intensity graph and <laughs> out to lunch and bring in some more combo killers for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's tr that's true. And I know the intentions are all good. I, I do the same thing. And then when you overwhelm, sometimes you don't realize it. And then it's not intentional. You just want to share so much because you have so much to share. It's like, and that's how I work. And then my staff looks at me like, talking about it's like well i already see where this is going but i didn't back up and tell them how we were getting there right and i think that's part of our visionary hub sludge right now is like we can all see different things but now we have to kind of know how we're getting there and then trust in a little bit of this which happens but i think that will help us all to for me be more efficient and then we can be more effective. Okay. Well, I think we've come to the end. I, this was a, a great chat, um, yes. as always. Yes. Thank you. Do you, one last thing before I let you roll. Do you think out of those two things, I know we talked all over, but out of the two focus points, is there one in me that you feel or see more than the other? Well, I, I would probably say public speaker. I, I think, I think at some point you're going to have some bigger audiences, and so you'll let's say you'll be doing coaching for people. But I think the general message of the larger audience, I think, will be coming through. Um, that's my take. Like teaching to larger groups rather than just one-on-ones. Yeah. Hey. And I think that I think that bodes well to, to the hub too, where it there has to be a draw to want to come to work with us. Yeah. Yeah. And I sent you in your email, you've got the fractal five level one. And then you've got the right. fractal five level two. So you make a fractal five of each of those. So you're basically taking your five and then breaking each of those into five. And that really defines whatever it is that you're you're doing. We right. didn't go as much into that, but I, th I think that you're best doing that, that on your own. Um, yeah. But it's, it's, it's again, like fractal, fractal information organization, I think is like the, <laughs> the next... I don't know what the next thing is, but I mean, it, it's a very interesting way to organize information. And so at every part, like at 8, 2.8, you organize things by 8. At 2.7, you organize things by 7. At 2.6, by 6. So you're always using that number to organize that specific thing. So at 2.5, it's products. Ah. So then okay. you do fractal 5, and then you start thinking, okay. <clears throat> and the mind likes that type of structure. It really does. Okay, that, that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Elijah. Appreciate it. All right. Okay. Until we meet again. Yeah, you bet. Bye-bye.